Welcome to Proven Improbable, where we focus on metals, mining, and more. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Today, we will discuss a company that presents a very unique value proposition in oil and gas. I'm speaking of Mallory Energy, trading on the TSXV symbol MOL and on the OTCQB symbol MOLOF. Joining us for a conversation is Joel Dumaresk. He is the CEO of Mallory Energy. Mr. Dumaresk, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Maurice. It's a pleasure to be here again with you and your audience. Joel, we had quite a bit of delay getting news out of Mallory on this first Red Cave appraisal well. Can you talk a bit about these delays? Admittedly, it did take us longer than we anticipated to get a handle on the well. As you'll recall, Maurice, we completed and logged the 23-1R well in mid-January. However, shortly after that, we got hit with a historically cold uh, weather front in uh, northern Texas, which ended up delaying our efforts to uh, frack the well well into uh, February. You'll also recall that the frack is really the silver bullet when it comes to getting a red cave well to flow oil, and for that matter, gas. Credit goes to our neighbors in Moore County, Adams Affiliates, who were the first to demonstrate that by employing fracks the size of which you see in the Permian Basin, they could get their red cave wells to flow at 40 to 50 barrels of oil a day. So getting back to our well, when we first came to frack, the air temperature was simply too low and the ground too hard for the almost 300,000 gallons of water we were to inject. As a matter of fact, our workaround ended up being that we heated the water before injecting it down into the formation. So by the time we completed the frack, we were already well into February. Once the well went into production, it was evident that we had an oil well along with some gas. However, what we didn't expect was the volume of water that flowed back from the frack. These red cave wells typically have a low water to oil ratio, so we weren't expecting to have watering issues. However, when you pump that much water down the hole, you're going to get a lot of that water back, and that's exactly what happened. The next challenge that we encountered was with the amount of sand in the well. We pumped approximately 300,000 pounds of sand into the well during the frack. And just to give you a perspective, that's about 16 tractor trailers full of sand, so a massive amount of sand. And what we found is that the sand uh, began falling back into the well and being picked up by the oil, which then presented a challenge for the pump. What we've been doing since is experimenting with different pumps to get around the sanding issue. And we certainly believe that we will get that challenge lit soon. So that's all a long way of telling you that indeed it did take longer than what we had expected. However, this was our first well of this type into this zone of the Red Cave. And just like Adams, we're learning as we go. With what we've learned on this first well, we will surely streamline and refine our completion strategy going forward. Let's talk about the production we're seeing from the first well. You know, from Mallory's announcement on Wednesday, that number looks to be, what, 28 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Let me ask you this, this multi-layered question here, Joel. Are you happy with that number? And more specifically, in previous interviews, you stated production numbers that Adams Affiliates were getting out of their Red Cave program. Is our Thompson 23 1R behaving like, as you would say, typical Adams Affiliates wells? Look, what's most important, uh, Maurice, from our perspective is that we found oil and, yes, some gas. When we talk of proof of concept, that's exactly what we were after. Uh, if you'll recall from our previous discussions, the Red Cave is a complex and tight formation, and Adams were the first to demonstrate that they could economically build production from the Red Cave. Many others had failed before them. From Mallory's part, no one has spent more time or money studying the Red Cave to get a sense of where the ribbon of oil actually sits. But that said, we are learning about the characteristics of producing oil from the Red Cave, and just as Adams has, our results will get better and better with the more wells we drill. So Adams has drilled over 50 wells into the Red Cave. At the outset, they also had issues with sand collapsing into the well, and they learned to overcome those issues. As they improved upon the completion techniques, their IPs consistently improved to where the average Adams well into the Red Cave now initially produces about 40 to 50 barrels of oil. Well, let's not forget that the oil is there in the 23-1R well. 
All we're talking about is how fast we initially recover that oil. It may impact upon the short-term economics of the well, however, the long-term economics remain unchanged. These are very inexpensive wells to drill in comparison to the wells that they're drilling down in the Permian, only about $250,000 or $300,000 per well. So the payback, even at just 20 to 25 barrels of oil per day, is still only a little over a year. So with the land position we've assembled and are continuing to assemble, we expect to have access to several hundred well locations. We've mentioned that before. More importantly, the first 50 to 100 locations that we're focused upon are simply offset locations relative to Adam's best wells. That's about the lowest hanging fruit you can get in this development business. So we can all do the math on what even just 100 locations looks like with 25 barrels a location. And when you think we are almost at $70 a barrel oil today, the economics really begin to shine. At the end of the day, we have to remember why we are in the red cave in the first place. This is virgin pressure, and the formation has not been depleted the way the brown dolomite formation has in northern Texas. You just don't find opportunities like this onshore in your own backyard and with land acquisition costs that are one one hundred of what it would cost uh, to get into the Permian today. This play is really an exceptional opportunity. You know, continuing on with the matter of production, in Mallory's announcement on Wednesday, you discussed that Mallory's technical team will be revising completion techniques. Can you talk about what this all means? And ultimately, do you and the team believe that revising the completion techniques will significantly affect the production numbers from future wells? Mm -hmm. Simply put, yes. When you compare the logs from the 23 1R well to some of Adam's recent wells, you would anticipate that our well should be flowing at 30 to 40 barrels a day. Now, the logs aren't a perfect barometer, and sometimes you can get false readings. However, we believe that by reducing slightly the amount of sand and water that we apply to the frack for the next frack, and by dropping balls to divert the water and sand to specific perforations during the frack process, and finally by running resin sand so that it holds much better within the formation, we will almost certainly improve the results. Statistically, there's just no reason why our production number shouldn't reflect Adam's performance as we drill more and more wells. Now that Mallory's uh, further demonstrated proof of concept, per Mallory's announcement on Wednesday, can you discuss the future wells planned and provide some sort of roadmap as to what to expect from Mallory in the next 90 days? Sure. We've been promising for some time announcements with regards to our land position. I know I need to do a better job of setting expectations, however, acquiring land always, always takes longer than expected. Much of uh, the land in this part of Texas, like other parts of Texas, Maurice, is held by ranchers in some cases, by investors in some cases, by oil companies in some cases. So to put together a land package takes a great deal of effort, patience, running around that part of Texas, talking to people and putting deals together. That said, we are now where we want to be, and we'll be sharing that with the markets over the next several days. When we began following Adams, we only had data and locations on a small handful of their wells. Now, over a year later, we have data, IP rates on almost 50 wells, and we've employed this intel in our land acquisition strategy. Some of these sections are, in the minds of our technical team, much closer to the sweet spot of the red cave than the lease upon which we just drilled the 23 1R well. Better yet, they are direct offsets of some of Adam's best wells. So we plan to focus the next phase of our development on those sections, which means more wells for Mallory. Switching gears, Joe, tell us why Mallory is a buy at 28 cents today, and why should new investors get excited about Mallory, and why should current shareholders remain excited and committed to Mallory? Look, when we were at 40 to 50 cents a share, Maurice, we had only just come to learn about the red cable. We had a small land holding that frankly we accidented into as a result of another transaction. And we were just beginning the study, which we completed a few months back, and which is what I understand to be the definitive analysis of where the ribbon of red cave oil is con concentrated. As a result of that work, 
as well as the data we've collected from the Texas Railway Commission over the last number of months on Adams' successes, we've developed and orchestrated upon a successful planned acquisition strategy. We've had to keep quiet about those efforts, admittedly, in order to ensure that we simply didn't just drive up the cost of the land uh, as we progressed through this whole acquisition strategy. But now we're ready and in position to talk about it. Getting back to the point I made earlier, there just aren't many oil-focused, untapped onshore development opportunities in North America with the extremely low cost of the red cave, in place oil, virgin pressures. In fact, I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Shallow, inexpensive wells, an extremely high recycle rate with the paybacks inside of years, we improve upon our completion techniques. Several hundred potential drill locations with dozens of infill drilling sites adjacent to some of Adam's best production. These are all uh, typical of, of what we're looking at here. Maurice, we've admittedly had a few missteps with our communication strategy, and I take responsibility for that. I've heard from shareholders about that. Um, but that said, we're committed to improving upon that, and as we share the full extent of this opportunity with our investors, I believe we and they will be rewarded uh, with much improved valuations. Joe, before we close, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Uh, I think the last time you asked me that question, I said it was something I couldn't control, something like the uh, world energy prices, and really that still remains the number one consideration. You'd think that higher oil prices play into our favor. However, uh, they are a bit of a double-edged sword. Good for overall economics of the project, yes, but counterproductive when it comes to securing land and opportunities. So when you're out there and landholders whom you're trying to buy land from see higher prices, uh, it makes it challenging to, to secure the, uh, the opportunities or it can in times make it more expensive. So we've We've dealt with that uh, to the best of our abilities. Uh, that said, uh, we're now at a position where we have largely put our land uh, package in place, and I think now I can sleep much more comfortably. And Joe, last question here for you. Talk to us about the share structure for Mallory Energy. Yeah, thanks, uh, Maurice. Um, the uh, current share structure uh, is what I think people in the markets would say, uh, extremely tight. Uh, we have about 38.5 million shares uh, issued and outstanding, which means we've got a 10 to $12 million market cap, which is extraordinarily modest uh, in this marketplace. And I don't think uh, really reflects what's happened with uh, energy prices. When we started looking at the Red Cave uh, many, many months ago, oil was in a range of 40 to $45 a barrel. Here it's now touching on $70 a barrel. So there's been a huge improvement in the potential economics of the project and the economics of, quite frankly, virtually all oil and gas development uh, projects. So I think uh, from our shareholders perspective, they stand in good position to benefit from that as we start to fully develop the opportunity and people start to recognize that with hundreds of well locations and the potential, whether it's 20 barrels a day per well, uh, 40 barrels a day per well, 50 barrels a day per well like Adams, or potentially even higher, uh, there are tremendous economics in this project. And if we're able to execute the way we should execute over the next uh, 12 to 36 months on this play, uh, you could see uh, very, very, very good returns for shareholders over that period, period of time, given um, how uh, inexpensive our company is at this juncture. Mr. Dumarisk, for someone listening that wants to get more information regarding Mallory Energy, please share the contact details. What I'd recommend for investors, uh, Maurice, is that they visit the uh, company's website, www.mallory, which is M-O-L-O-R-I, energy.com and uh, the information there for getting in contact with our investor relations specialist or myself is there on the website. And for our listeners to get more information regarding Mallory Energy, your contact there is going to be Judy Ann Pottinger. Her phone number is 604-617-5290. Again, that number is 604-617-5290. And her email is judy-ann at Mallory 
Judy-Ann.com. One more time, that is Judy-Ann at MalloryEnergy.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, www.provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Joel Dumaresk of Malori Energy, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.